Greetings, Pino Mortals. Welcome back to MTG Dungeon. Today we're doing something a little different. Instead of doing some modern commentary or EDH commentary, we're going to be talking about um, the best ways and places to sell your cards. Um, I feel this is a very important thing to know and discuss in these current uh, coronavirus times. Uh, a lot of us are not working or we're not making as much as we normally were, and we need to be able to support ourselves and our families uh, financially. And knowing the best way to sell cards or th and thin down our collections is something I feel that everyone should know. Um, also the pros and cons of the sites that we use to sell them. So first thing we're gonna talk about obviously is buy listing. Buy listing is fine if you have a larger collection and you don't wanna deal with uh, selling individual cards. Uh, you have like a massive, you know, 10,000 card collection. You just want to ship it off to Card Kingdom, Star City Games, Channel Fireball, Troll and Toad, any of the big ones. That's fine, but you're only going to be getting about 50% value for the cards at best. That's assuming they're in like perfect condition. Most of our cards probably aren't, in all honesty. Most of them are probably in about light play condition. A couple of nicks on corners here and there, maybe a little bit of sleeve wear. But again, like dealing with a large collection, if you just need a good chunk of money you know as quickly and as soon as possible instead of dealing with all of the singles that you're going to be selling that's always an option uh we're going to be talking today about the other options of um so the two big ones obviously is ebay and tcg player we're going to talk about those and there's a third option we're going to talk about that uh, i have also recently been doing and it's been working out very well for me so first up let's talk about ebay so uh eBay uh, is very straightforward, simple to use. Um, their seller fees are just a flat 10% for the final value fee. Um, and then they have uh, PayPal also charges you a fee of 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. So every card you sell, you're going to have the 10% fee from eBay. And you're going to have the 2.9% plus 30 cents from PayPal. Um, plus side with eBay is you get uh, 50 uh, insertion fees every month for free. After that, they charge you 35 cents. Most of us are not going to be using the 50 a month. Obviously, with uh, the coronavirus and everything else, some of us might be doing that. But for the most part, most of us are not going to be doing that. Um, and we're going to try and use the same uh, total value example as we're going through uh, all of these sites so ebay so let's uh let's go take a look so let's say we sold a misty rainforest and it went up for auction we put it up there for five days and let's say the, the ending amount was 65.31 so it's like okay we sold it for 65.31 and we were charging a dollar for shipping so the total that uh that we would be getting for this is 66.30 uh, obviously some of us live in states with sales tax. I live in Washington. I'm putting that up as an example for some of us that actually does matter. Um, so the total charged amount to the person buying the card is 71.67. Okay. So eBay takes their 10% fee, which is going to be $6.30. Uh, PayPal's fee, uh, cause they're taking it from the entire amount charged of the 71.67. The PayPal fee is going to be $2.38. So from our uh, 6630 total that we had, um, eBay is taking $8.68. So effectively we end up selling that card for $57.62 through eBay. That's not terrible, that's not bad. Uh, pros with eBay is once your card has sold and the buyer has paid for it, you have access to that money within one to two days. Um, Go straight to your PayPal, it's there. You can use it within one to two days. It's great, it's nice. The downside with eBay is your card can sell for a range of prices. Um, in the past I've experienced, uh, I put up similar lots of cards, like I've had um, thought seasons from the same set, same condition, listed two days apart. Uh, one sold for 90% of the value, the other one sold for 72% of the value. So it's, it's really kind of a crapshoot. Um, there are like buy it now options, which are gonna charge you a little more on fees and whatnot. But typically if you wanna sell the cards, you're gonna wanna put them up for actual auction and let people bid on them and hope that 
two, three, or four people kind of get into a bidding war on the card. So that's the first example of eBay. I said it's it's fine, it's great, um, good size downsides to it. So the next one we're going to talk about is TCG Player. So TCG Player, uh, really easy. You sign up for a seller's account, you get information, you start off at level one, and I level one. Uh, it's just me and, and my business partner. We do have a uh, online store at TCG Player. Links down below. So a little self promotion here. Um, but so when you're level one, I believe you can only list or have a hundred cards at any given time in your store. It might be fifty, but I'm I want to say it's a hundred starting off off the bat. Um, but as you uh, make sales and people are leaving good reviews, like you're not scamming anybody and you're listing the cards, you know, the correct condition and whatnot, you can bump up levels, which basically just means that you can have a bigger inventory. That's really all the, the actual levels mean. So, um, but TCG player charges a 10.25% uh, fee for listing on their site, uh, but the PayPal fee is a little less at the two and a half percent plus 30 cents per transaction. Um, so before we get into the same formula on that one, so plus side with TCG player is you can sell it extremely, extremely close to whatever the card's value is. Um, so that is a big plus, like you kind of like know if the card sells, you know, you're knowing exactly what it's selling for as opposed to eBay, you can get that huge variable swing. So it's a good thing with TCG Player. The really big downside to TCG Player is it's going to take about two weeks for you to actually get a deposit from them. Because how TCG Player works is uh, whatever cards you sell, you know, you ship them out. Um, if, if you don't have tracking, typically they they will wait for either the customer to leave feedback to let them know that they got the card. Or if it's tracked, obviously they can track it and see that it got there. Uh, if not, I believe it's like they wait two weeks to release the money to see if there's any disputes or complaints from the customer about the card. So uh, typically you're not going to be able to even get that money for typically two weeks. So it's kind of one of those, depending on how fast you need money, um, it's kind of dependent on which of the two major ones you want to use. Obviously, TCG Player, you're going to have more consistency selling cards, like for, you know, what they're going to sell for, the price you're going to get, whatever you list it as. Somebody buys it, that's the price they buy it for, whatever you listed it for. As opposed to eBay, you're kind of hoping with bids. But let's go uh, Let's go take a look at uh, the how the fees break down on the TCG Player side. So same thing, let's say we had a moderate play t Mystery Reinforce that we sold for 6531 same thing, we're charging a dollar for shipping. Obviously, I'm in Washington, we have the same sales tax. So, the total, again, is going to be uh, 7167 So, the big difference is that since TCU Player charges more of the commission fee, um, their price overall is going to be 680 for the fee. And then, PayPal is going to be a little less than what eBay is. They're only charging us $2.09. Uh, so the total that we lose is 889, which then gives us a total that we sold a card for at 5741. It is literally a 21 cent difference after the fees between TCG Player and eBay. TCG Player being that 21 cent uh, cheaper option to do. So obviously, like overall fee wise it's not mattering a whole lot, right? Like I mean, 21 cents is not the big of a difference. eBay is the one with the bigger risk because you don't necessarily get to set the price that you want for the card. So now we have the those out of the way, we're going to talk about a third option. So the third option we're gonna talk about is Facebook selling groups. Now, I know for some of you, you're gonna be like, well, this is a Facebook selling group. I am very leery of it. Um, now, um, I'm gonna mention two groups that I've actually done business in both buying and selling, and I have had no issues. Um, the first one we're gonna talk about is um, MGG Six Deals, 
which we'll uh, post a picture here and have a nice little uh, link for them down below. And MTG uh, High End, um, which is also another one. We'll have a nice little picture of them and the link in our description below. Um, so how those groups typically work is whatever cards you're trying to sell, they want they their only big requirement for the most part is listing them at 10% lower than uh, what TCG has them in the condition. So let's say you have a near mint Misty Rainforest and they're currently going for $90. All they're asking for you to do is it, uh, list it at 10% less. They want you to, uh, you know, you can list Misty Rainforest at $81. Um, you know, and some people obviously go a little less. Some people might go like, you know, like, oh, make it even 80, you know, make it nice round numbers. Um, so that's the only real big requirement. Uh, these groups are also very good about keeping track of people who, um, defraud other people. Like they have a, like if you get found to be defraud, you are banned. You can't do any more transactions. And if you're wary about buying from somebody, they have reference posts. So like other people in that group who've done business with them before and like, Hey, this person, you know, they, they, they tracking cards are exactly as they described. It's great. Um, and the other plus side is with it being, you know, kind of like you're setting the price of the 10% lower, right? So like the, let's say the, the Misty's that we sold on eBay and TCG, let's say they end up selling for the same price on the Facebook groups. It is just a flat 10%, right? You don't have to worry about, so you're effectively saving 3% on those, which I mean, obviously doesn't add up to much, but the fact that you're saving that much and uh, if you're using the PayPal uh, friends and family, you don't get charged the commission fee from PayPal either. And that's another big one, right? That's going to save you typically one, two, three dollars per card that you sell. And that can be huge. When like, you sell 10 cards through eBay or TCG player and you're losing, you know, two dollars every time just for using the PayPal side, even if you sold it exactly at less than, you know, the 10 percent, you sell 10 cards, that's 20 dollars. Like it adds up very quickly. Um, so just so you, like I said, and like these groups have tons of other groups in them. Like uh, the MTG high-end cards, they have three or four other groups that are linked to them, like for miscuts, for uh, misprints, for, you know, beta cards. And they have trade-only groups. If you don't, if you're kind of like, hey, you're bored with the deck, you want to trade, you know, you want to trade Dredge for Storm, they have groups like that. And so it's, an, it's a very good resource to use and i said like i've i've used mtg sick deals i've sold on there and i've bought on there and i have had no issues i've bought some higher end stuff like i bought a, a place out of force of wills uh on sick deals um the person sent me the wrong package but me and the, uh, and the other person they sent to were able to communicate with each other and send each other their correct packages like it's gonna happen sometimes um and as long as you're willing to you know like give people some benefit of the doubt or just like obviously like, hey, who just sent this person to? Let me contact them. You know, you guys can, like, work things out. And it's it's a great community. I've had no issues so far. Um, so that is just another option that you guys can use. Um, as I said, like, I mean, obviously, like, uh, support your local game stores as well. Like, um, if you guys are able to, like, buy cards, packs, whatever from them, and necessarily not from TCG Player, if you're able to. Because, as I said, it's some staggering number, like, 50% of the card shops aren't gonna be able to open back up after this and so we're also trying to support them as well like we have one of our local card shops that we do our monitor our modern commentary that we film at we're trying to support them as best we can gift cards you know picking up sleeves going to their ebay store picking up stuff as best we can so uh i thought i would just you know give you guys options that maybe some of you don't know about or things to consider uh that you can sell cards at to get close to value especially in these times I said, uh, I'll have links down below for the sick deals and high end, which um, they also have links in their own groups for other things that you're looking for. But so just trying to get it out there, let you guys know, uh, make sure you stay safe. Uh, don't get infected if you can. If you do, obviously stay away from people. And hopefully we will be a much better community when we come out of this. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I do appreciate it.